So here I am roaming around Eureka again. I wandered into the Eureka Fly Shop and ran into Mike Kaczynski. Mike, what's the fishing report? What what kind of what kind of what kind of what kind of equipment do you recommend? Well, what I'd like to do is give you an overview of the fishing through the year here in Humboldt County. And to start with, we'll talk about the lagoons, which are unique to our area. We've got Big Lagoon, Stone Lagoon, and Freshwater. And Big Lagoon and Stone Lagoon are brackish, so they have unique kinds of insects and creatures that live in there. They both have steelhead and cutthroat. For Big Lagoon, we use a fly like this, which is a crystal bugger. We use the brown when the sun's on the water. And early and late, we use the gray which I think they're taking that for sticklebacks. Wow. Fishing the sandy areas, you can use a little scud, which they actually imitate little isopods, little shrimp type creatures. Hold that, I'm gonna zoom in on that for a second. Wow, and that's pretty cool looking. The lagoons fish really good from spring through summer. The other springtime fishing that we have is surf bridge fishing, which people don't think about fly fishing in the ocean very much, but this is a sand crab imitation that we use to catch surf per perch on the sandy beaches and in the in the bay here. Wow, that's a cool looking bug. Yeah, it looks just like a little sand crab. Yeah. A mole crab. The uh, rock fishing is also very good in the spring and summer and we use flies like this off the jetties and rocky areas. Oh, that's a hairy one. Yeah, to catch rockfish, lingcod, and if you're lucky, cabazon. Cabazon are really cool because they taste like lobster. Uh. Then comes the fall, starting in July, steelheads start coming into the lower Klamath, and those are the world famous half pounder run. The first run are adults, and they're smaller, they're two to six pounds, and the flies we use for those are more drab type flies, like the brindle bug, this is a beadhead brindle bug. Oh yeah, bug. yeah, I've seen those. We use that in sunny conditions, and then the beadhead moss back, which we use when the it's overcast or early and late. Cool. In fact, I believe you caught a big fish on one of these, John. I did. Yeah. I did. I did. I caught a great I fish. I figured you'd look familiar. And one of my favorites is it's called a humbug. That's the humbug. That's the humbug. Wow. That's one of the local. Do you tie favorites. these, Mike? At one point or another, I've tied all these. Um, I, I think I might have tied this one. Wow. But, but um, most of these are tied by local tires. The um, other fishing we have are coastal cutthroats, and people for the fishing game trying to get their heritage trout need to catch a coastal cutthroat. This is a light spruce, which is one of the best cutthroat flies. Uh -huh. You have all those in stock? Everything's in stock and ready to go. Then comes the, the uh, fall king run, and fishing for kings, surprisingly, we'll use flies like these. This is called a green grasshopper, which is one of the local favorites for Chinook salmon, and they start typically coming into the rivers in September. You'll catch a 30, 40 pound king yep, on that? even bigger, especially on the Smith and the Eel. This is, wow. this is a good one. Wow. And then as winter comes along, we start using bigger, brighter flies like these for the winter steelhead. When the river's off color, you want to use a large silhouette, heavily weighted fly in black or purple, but as the river clears, you can use more of the bright, color flies. Wow. These are called hairballs, which were invented by John Rupp, who used to work here. No kidding. So that takes you through the winter, and then now we're back to spring and back to the uh, lagoons and surf perch fishing. Mike, you're a wealth of information. Anybody wants to come by and learn how to fly fish, they just contact Mike Kaczynski from Eureka Fly Shop. Thanks so much, Mike. Thanks, John.